Yes, I try to watch uh, Beef for Vendetta and uh, it, it. <laughs> right, there's a linen cop right here. I got a cell phone I pulled over, lights on, uh, car running. You know, wasting fuel like that, pulling the environment, you know, with the heat on probably on a cell phone, text message, who knows what he's doing, right? Where well, was uh a uh, head in a cell phone. Meanwhile, I'm driving without my seatbelt. And let's be honest, I had uh, two beers beforehand. Not that I'm driving recklessly, you know. I could put, I have a six pack right here. He, he won't get me with uh, a breathalyzer. He won't, he shouldn't. I, I, I'm not drunk. I'm not, I'm being uh, speed laws. But you know what? There's some people that come, uh, some people that do some damage and he, he just doesn't watch that. Anyway. But he's, he represents the law, right? He's the law. You know, he's a, he's a typical cop. He just, you know, he's, he's, he has his job and he just thinks he owns everything. He just, you know, and comes him and he lets, you know, he's being reckless. So anyway, V from Vendetta, and like, I don't know if it was the actual actor that played V over there, which is Guy Fawkes, but it, it's, it, as the movie is set up, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, I don't want to say representation, it's a caricature of a Guy Fawkes the guy uses as a mask and he, he goes on a you know spree terrorist spree for the right reasons because he was tortured by uh government entities from great britain and he wants to destroy him from in and out you know and um guy fox you know he uh in uh centuries before he uh he wanted to to, to uh he had dynamite he wanted uh uh to destroy uh you know the parliament if you will of great britain because, you know, they were corrupt, this, you know, he got caught, he, he was hanged. But, you know, and not only Portman over there, like, I can't watch the movie, like, why the fuck is your idiot ass even communicating with me? Like, listen, you are the guy that plays Guy Fawkes, the V guy. Like, I don't know who it is. Like, go fuck yourselves. Listen, you're an actor, you're an actress, do your fucking job, okay? You're not the fucking rebel. You don't, you don't, you don't fight against the government like that. And even that, it was, you know, the thing is, like, you know, all these actors and actresses, they take their little job too seriously, man. Like, even Fight Club. Like, both you fucking guys are not into that shit. You make a lot of money, man. You guys are into fucking, you know, not just anarchy and, like, doing that stuff. Okay? I can't watch Fight Club because one of these two doofuses starts chiming in and shit, bro. Like, yeah, listen, man. You're, you're an actor. You do theater, bro. You're theater and camera. Like, stick to the shit you do, man. I don't want to watch Fight Club or V for Vendetta, like, fucking, you know, have experience with, you know, V the actor, wherever that guy is, or fucking Natalie Portman, or fucking, you know, uh, Brad Pitt and Emery Norton Jr., bro. I don't watch that for you, man. You know? It represents what, you know, those two, those two movies, you know, it represents uh, the fight for the human experience, you know, for freedom. And you, you idiots, you know, you, you go one day, you get a job and shit. It's not really that fucking tough to, uh, to put up a fight, nonetheless, physically or otherwise. You know, I saw some of you, I yelled at Brad Pitt, and you guys, you guy was a coward. Well, that's, that, that's the guy, uh, you know, from fucking, you know, Fight Club right there. That's his character, man, you know? It's like, you idiot ass is gonna fucking, you know, I'm not saying you should, like, you know, blow up the parliament or Congress, but you know, he poor was there on January 6th. She was just fucking fighting with swords and shit, like the guy in a mask, man. You know, you take your jobs to a different fucking level, all right? Uh, it's like, you know, it, it's also, it's not that you're that character. That's the problem. Like, hey, let's just say Guy Fox, may be fucking offended by you fucking idiots. Like, who the fuck are you people? You know, it's like, it's, 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 it's not just he got hanged, his whole life was up, but he stood for something. He stood against corruption, you know? It's like anyone's gonna fucking, you know, it's, you know, I want to talk about the founding fathers, which is another term I have a problem with, but the people that were here a couple hundred centuries ago, they gave up their life to, you know, have freedom, and you idiots gonna make a movie, and that's how you think you're like one of those fucking people. It's like, you know, I don't, I don't watch it. I can't watch before that. It's like three ninety nine, you know, on YouTube. It's like, the reason why I even... You know, I'm recording this, and it's like, you know, I can't watch any movie without, uh, you know, the person who was in there, somebody else, especially when they're just fucking with me, and like, you know, I have thoughts, and I ridicule him, and I argue, yesterday, I just fucking lost my temper, 
the V from there, I was like a minute, two minutes. It was like an opening scene, and she was getting robbed. And it looked kind of, you know, it, it was cinematic, but just like, I don't want to have that fucking experience. You know? I'm fucking tired of movies. And I'm just starting to think, like, should I watch a cartoon? And the guy that animates the character would, like, fucking, you know, haunt me, taunt me, and, like, when I get an argument or some shit. Like, what the fuck? You know, and either, it's like, it, it really doesn't matter. And the reason why it's like, I wanted to watch the movie, and it's like, you know, it, it's not expensive, it's like $19.90, $20 just to buy it. And it's uh, Fighting Forrester. But it's like, I don't want to watch that. Somebody else going to get my fucking mind. We're, gonna, we're talking about this. And when, when the scene I really talk about, and I'm pretty sure I could watch it on YouTube, just a snippet of it. I just want to watch the whole entire movie. I paid the $20, bro. I just want to be fucked with, you know? And it's the scene when, um, uh, you know, uh, see, I'm going to say Sean's, uh, Sean Connery's character. Maybe I shouldn't even dress him as such. But, you know, okay, like, dude, you pull out too much, but I get it. There's cars parked. It's fine. Anyway, talking to <laughs> talking to a kind of guy that pulls out too, too much. You know, it's like uh, there's a writer. He wrote a novel, and um, he lives in seclusion. And then he uh, uh, he has a newcomer, if you will. It's uh, a young person from the neighborhood. And it's a black guy, but, you know, he's just, like, very literate. And he's, like, you could say he's a natural-born author. He's very smart. I don't want to put the genius on him, you know, like, he's a genius, but... He's very intelligent. He plays basketball, and um, he's they're sitting with two typewriters, and you know the the affluent writer that is in seclusion is telling him, you know, oh you write your first draft, you just you just like you say freestyle, you just write. You don't care about this. You just write off the top of your head, and then you go back. You either you you either you proofread or you just rethink it and you reanalyze it and you just you know you redo it. And it's like, you know, I'm thinking like, fuck, man. I got a typewriter. I bought it for like $20 at a yard. So there's a couple buttons I got to get fixed. But it's like, yeah, I want to get a typewriter. Not on my, you know, cell phone or like, you know. I mean, I could do it on my laptop. But it's a whole thing with, with, with the typewriter. It's a whole different experience, you know. Or maybe you know, should I should get my composition book and, and just start writing it like I, I did uh, uh, a couple of times before. You know, and you get into it and you just, you just let it go. You know, the one time I had a problem with, I was just too conflicted about wording, metaphors, and it's like, it, it just, it just, it's like, I shouldn't know this, but it's like, just, just let it write. You know, that's the part I want to see in that movie, because, uh, I don't think that, you know, the, the new guy, you know, the, the young guy from the neighborhood, he never had that experience. He was just learning at it, and, you know, Sean Connery's character, the F right, was just, just so fluent at it. But it was just so cool, it's like, you know, in a metaphor sense, like, you know, uh, the guy who can play basketball, this guy, the guy's a old legend, and he just, you know, he introduces something new. And, and, and the young guy was into basketball, too. You know, he got pushed around by other people, but he stood his ground, you know? And it was just a good movie because, like, he stood his ground, and he was very humble at it. He was very quiet. He was very well poised, you know? And eventually, you know, there's some other people that just felt like, you know, they were, you saw their, uh, the, the class master if you will, the, the English teacher, you know, from his, uh, his, his high school that he went to, it was like a very parochial rich school. Uh, you know, he got in there because on a scholarship, uh, I guess he got to play basketball. It was about his scholastics. You know, he got really, really good grades and he got full tuition, but then he embarrassed the teacher multiple times. And it was just a very good moment. And then I was like, you know, I was thinking like, is that even real? Is it like Hollywood grasping the straws? I'm like, I had teachers like that as well. I had teachers like that. They fucking think that the fucking world, because like they have power. You know, so uh, I love that movie for that. And it just feels good. It feels good. Like, you know, he, uh, you know, <clears throat> spoilers alert. I mean, <laughs> it brings the affluent writer at the end. And the teacher doesn't know they know each other. And the athlete right points out to him, it, it was, you know, Jamal that wrote that. And the teacher felt low and slow. He didn't know what to say because he hated the fuck out of that guy. And, and it's not just, I don't think he was black. It wasn't that. <clears throat> it's just that he wasn't a procrastinator, you know. He wasn't procrastinating. He wasn't a total idiot before eight. He stood his ground, you know. It's not so much about color skin. Maybe for some people it is. But people just hate somebody that, you know, 
either, you know, they're not weak and stuff like that. And there's individuals that want to have power over you. When you don't even have that power, which they don't deserve, which you have a job, do your fucking job, all right? Don't fucking think you have power on me because you do your job and all of a sudden you think you own me and you know, not that you know better than me, but it's like, you know, we got to be in an even keel here. You do your job, I'll do my mind right and I'll try to, you know, <laughs> better my mind, you know? Not so much Natalie Portman and that fucking teacher, but it's like, you know, that's just your job. You don't control anything like that. You don't control the minds and you sure as hell shouldn't control with that, you know, I, uh, I do my work, this and that, and, uh, you know, you don't control my, uh, my, my temper, my anger based on your, uh, uh, you know, uh, illusion of fucking uh, reality that you just think you're just fucking grandiose or some shit. You know, so I just, uh, pretty much what that is, I connected the two.